When you dig into the scientific studies, most metals decrease testosterone, if you have even a little more than you should. Zinc, boron, magnesium, and calcium are exceptions. I recently did an extensive video on zinc, discussing foods with zinc, how fiber messes up zinc uptake, different types of zinc found in supplements, and health impacts on muscle mass, and a ton of other things. Of note, I highlighted this study which found that you can improve marginally zinc deficient older men's testosterone. The average age here was 64 years old. You could take their testosterone from eight to 16 using the European units for testosterone. This is taking testosterone from 230 to 460 in American units. In other words, these people doubled their testosterone with one supplement, namely zinc, which is very impressive when they were only marginally deficient. The point here is, Zinc supplements noticeably increase testosterone, and in some cases, testosterone doubles with just zinc. Again, very impressive. Keep in mind that red meat has loads of zinc, so you should watch the video on my channel and learn more because I'm not here to push you into buying a growing list of supplements. But today, let's talk about boron and look into the health benefits of boron, especially in regards to testosterone, but also in relation to anything that the scientific research studies have discovered. So first, boron does have a reputation among nutritionists as the mineral that increases free testosterone. That's what boron is best known for. And this is valid. The original study that discovered this was done in 2011. It's called Comparative Effects of Daily and Weekly Boron Supplements. And they gave people 11.6 milligrams of boron. Literally within six hours, sex hormone binding globulin decreased. Most people call this sex hormone binding globulin SHBG. And SHBG simply transports hormones around. I call SHBG the limo for sex hormones or the taxi for testosterone. In other words, because testosterone and other sex hormones are made from cholesterol, they float on water. Your blood is aqueous, your blood is like water. So these hormones need to ride the limo to get around your blood. And SHBG is the limo for those sex hormones. So anyway, SHBG decreases within hours of boron supplementing, which frees up more testosterone, allowing your body to use more testosterone. Testosterone is no longer in the limo. It's able to go out into your cells. It's free. The free stuff is the important stuff when we're talking about testosterone. And sure enough, after one week of boron supplements, they see free testosterone is increased, which is exactly what you'd predict if you lower SHBG for an extended time. Boron also lowered the major estrogen found in our bodies. It lowered estradiol. And boron increased DHT, cortisol, and vitamin D. All interesting findings. In fact, because of this study, I'd advise against taking boron in the morning. Because cortisol is already really high in the morning, and you don't want to drive cortisol up higher. If you push cortisol too high, your blood sugar will spike. Most people call this the dawn effect. Plus your immune system will weaken with elevated cortisol, especially weakens your T cells. And your memory can decrease because chronically high cortisol can shrink your hippocampus, a region in your brain related to memory. Just so you can see it for yourself, this is a 24 hour cortisol graph comparing kids with depression, anxiety, and healthy kids, which all have similar cortisol levels, by the way. But the cortisol jumps up around 5 a.m. to about 9 a.m., assuming you're waking up, waking up at about 7 a.m. Obviously, you don't want to increase the top of this graph in the morning hours by taking boron around that same time. You don't want to do that for the sake of your immune system, your brain, your blood sugar. But other than that small detail, boron supplements seem extremely beneficial if you're deficient or you're marginally deficient especially because boron frees up testosterone. It's worth mentioning too, that your testosterone cycles in a very similar way to cortisol. It increases throughout the night, spikes in the morning, and then slowly declines throughout the daytime, unless you work night shifts, obviously. But this is even more of a reason to supplement boron at or after lunchtime, because you want to free up more testosterone throughout the afternoon or even in the evening, anytime except the morning, so that checks out for timing boron supplements or intermittent fasting and eating two meals a day at noon and 6 p.m., which works well for many people, not everybody, but many people. And it's always worth mentioning too, on average, women's testosterone is higher 
throughout their entire lives compared to estrogen, if you make the units the same on a blood test. T here stands for testosterone, and E2 stands for estradiol, the major estrogen found in men and women. So this testosterone data relating to boron is relevant for both men and women, especially if women want to prevent osteoporosis later in life. Now anyway, what else is positive about boron besides testosterone? I wanna go through a list that includes all the benefits, and this is from my favorite article on boron titled, Nothing Boring About Boron. They say it's essential for bone growth and maintenance. So we're going back to the osteoporosis prevention here. Number two, boron greatly improves wound healing. Number three, it's beneficial for hormones. And sorry to pause here on the boron list, but vitamin D is a sex hormone. It's not really a vitamin. What I mean is if scientists discovered vitamin D today, we wouldn't even define it as a vitamin. We'd call it a hormone. And keep in mind the definition of a sex hormone is a hormone that's made from cholesterol. And D3, in our bodies is certainly synthesized from cholesterol. But also, once vitamin D is inside our cells, it actually crosses the nuclear envelope, like a pillow the pillowcase around your DNA, and vitamin D goes into the actual nucleus, which is highly unusual. And then it activates target genes, increases mRNA production, and ultimately makes target proteins. This is not the activity of a normal vitamin, not even close, this is the action of a sex hormone. For example, when testosterone goes into a cell, it also goes into the nucleus past the nuclear envelope, again, the pillowcase surrounding our DNA, and testosterone activates target genes, which leads to target mRNA and ultimately target proteins. Now, some people prefer the term steroid hormones rather than sex hormones, but they're synonyms. I personally prefer the term sex hormones because the word steroid carries a bunch of mental baggage for people that can be distracting. But the point is, vitamin D acts exactly like a sex hormone, and it's made from cholesterol exactly like a sex hormone. So it's interesting that boron boosts vitamin D. Number four, boron boosts magnesium absorption, which is positive. And again, back to the bones. Number five, boron reduces levels of cytokines, the triggers for inflammation. Number six, boron raises antioxidant enzymes within our body, such as SOD2, which is a gene involved in heart disease risk, by the way, which I do analyze when I have D DNA consults, a very important heart gene. And glutathione is increased, which is involved in heavy metal clearance in our bodies, which once again, I look at glutathione genes during DNA consults. Number seven, boron protects against oxidative stress from pesticides and heavy metals, which is basically the same thing as number six. Because if you increase antioxidant enzymes and you increase glutathione, you're going to protect against pesticides and heavy metals. Number eight, boron improves brain electrical activity, cog performance, and short-term memory, which is obviously all good probably relating to increased free testosterone, if I had to guess. And there are a few other benefits of boron that are along these similar themes that we've already covered, antioxidant or toxin protect protection. And this is all very interesting, and they mention the beneficial effects of boron appear at intakes above three milligrams per day, which is helpful. And there's no specific estimated average requirement. There's no RDA, which illustrates how little the medical industry cares about natural vitamins and minerals. The industry is focused on selling, researching, and advertising pharmaceutical drugs, of course, because you can patent those drugs and you can make a lot of money on those drugs, even though there's never a free lunch in terms of side effects. But they mention here that the upper intake limit is 20 milligrams per day for adults. So anyway, boron's an excellent micronutrient. It's an ex excellent mineral. Do our bodies absolutely need boron? I'd say no, but there's always a little bit of boron in our foods, so you never need to worry about having zero boron or boron deficiency, unless you're eating atrociously ultra-processed foods, uh, in which case you have bigger problems than just boron deficiency. Now, going back to the scientific studies, obviously, you're not going to do a study on humans with boron-free diets in case it kills or stunts people. But scientists have tried to do zero boron diet studies on animals. What is interesting here, if I ask AI Grok about animal studies with zero boron, 
Grok says chicks on a boron-free diet have stunted growth, messed up feather development, and weaker bones. When I go to the actual study, however, the researchers couldn't fully remove boron from the diet without making the chick diet also deficient in calcium and phosphorus. So of course they had weaker feather, feathers and bones and less growth. They have major calcium and phosphorus deficiencies. This is the problem with most studies. They do these extreme things, but people and even the current AI models interpret the studies to say boron-free diets are extremely bad when it's a calcium deficient and a phosphorus deficient situation, which is far more extreme and far more problematic. It's basically clickbait science, even before clickbait was a popular term. Now the AI, the artificial intelligence Grok program also references a rat study and says rats on zero boron diets have slower growth rates, lower bone density and shifts in hormones. But when you go to this study, lo and behold, it's the same nonsense. The scientists didn't study boron free diets. They studied boron free diets in rats fed with a vitamin D deficient diet. What the hell, right? The point is you can't have a diet that's completely devoid of boron in, if you're just eating whole foods, but eat raisins or avocados and you'll be especially excellent. And if you're a competitive athlete, I'd recommend going the extra mile and supplementing 10 milligrams per day of boron. Or if you're fighting uh, chronic inflammation, brain fog, cancer, or low free testosterone, I'd also recommend boron at 10 milligrams per day. And when I do DNA consulting, among other things, I specifically look at testosterone genes, genes related to SHBG. For example, RS1799941 is an SHBG gene variant that leads to SHBG levels that are 0.4 standard deviations higher than normal. So when people have gene issues like this, I want them taking boron to keep the SHBG down and to keep the free testosterone up. But that's why I think looking at individual genetics is the gold standard. But I hope this helps you understand boron. Oh, and I forgot to discuss the different types of boron found in supplements. If you're going to take a supplement, there are about four main types of boron. The three common ones you find are boron citrate, boron aspartate, and boron glycinate, which are all fine as far as I can tell. I'd probably choose glycinate among those three, but I don't think it's a big difference. Mainly, I'd try and avoid citric acid when I can because it's purified from black mold, citric acid is, which is obviously a potential allergen. And when we ship citrate or citric acid in from China, do you really think the FDA is doing batch testing or purity tests to try and determine if there are residual toxins that increase inflammation? Individual supplement companies aren't usually doing these tests. So again, it's a sketchy situation that people need to be aware of with the citric acid. So it sounds good to get a triple boron complex, but I think you're better off with a boring single boron supplement if you don't eat raisins or avocados. Boron complex with amino acids like glycine, which is also called glycinate, or the amino acid aspartic acid, which is also called aspartate. So that's what I think. Uh, there's also a patented form of boron that's called fructoborate, meaning it's fructose, it's a fructose sugar combined with boron. And there are currently 38 studies done on fructoborate, and you find the topics of inflammation or anti-inflammation, you see cancer studies and bone density research, all the usual boron related stuff, but I don't see any evidence this fructoborate is worth paying extra money for. Some of these studies have clickbait headlines like assessment of potential boron fructose additive and counteracting the toxin effect, the toxic effects of mold. And then you read the study and you find that the fructoborate did not counteract the toxic effects of mycotoxins, mold toxins. And besides this, when you supplement fructoborate, you need to take two giant pills just to get 10 milligrams per day instead of one tiny pill. So it's more of a pain and obviously it costs more because you're paying for a licensed patented product. So I'd suggest go with simple boron glycinate at the 10 milligram dose if you decide to supplement boron. Or again, just eat raisins and avocados and stick with whole foods so you're not craving ultra processed junk. All right, I appreciate you watching. Keep learning, stay healthy out there.